All right, everyone. Last looks. Right on set. Roll sound. Sound speed. Roll camera. Camera speed. Scene one, take one. Mark it. And action. Hi, I'm Ed, the host of Savannah on Film, and we explore the economic and cultural impact and values of the film industry in Savannah through conversations with people who work in the industry and related fields. You can find us here on WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Sound, community radio with global soul. Hello, Savannah. Hello, the world. Welcome to another fantastic show here, Savannah on Film. And if you're new to the show, welcome. Uh, our purpose here is to explore the economic and cultural impacts of the film industry in Savannah through conversations with, pe with people who work in the industry and related fields. We are here on WRUU 107. 0.5 FMLP Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. And uh, I love doing that. Um, community Radio with Global Soul. There's the radio voice. Um, I want to remind you, everybody, that WRUU is on Twitter at WRUU1075. That's WRUU1075. So you want to check them out there and hear about all the great programming we've got for you. And um, speaking of great programming, I've got a wonderful guest today, and I promise you a unique show because I've never had anyone on the show who has the qualifications that this gentleman does, and they are vast. Uh, he has a myriad of, uh, I'm using up all the big words today, um, <laughs> I got my thesaurus out, um, he has a myriad of um, qualifications um a couple of things uh, well first off his name is michael neal welcome to the show michael neal thanks ed thank you for thanks, agreeing ed. to be here and uh just just a few things about him as we get started here um oh a little little house cleaning first or whatever before we, we get into everything um you're hearing the show now here on wruu um, it's Saturday night because that's the place to be from 7 to 8 p.m. on WRU listening to Savannah on film or um, on 107.5 or you're listening via the internet and at WRUU.org. And then after that, we invite you back for this video that if you're watching the video now, it's Saturday. So, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're kind of pre-recording this a little bit here from my home studio. So, um I hope everyone's uh, happy and healthy out there. Um, it's a tough time in the film industry for everyone. And uh, I know it's coming back. And uh, anywho, so we'll see you on YouTube, 8 o'clock. Michael's going to join us um, there, and we'll be taking your comments and questions. And I want to thank everybody who's been um, hanging out on YouTube with us on Saturday nights at 8 o'clock. It's been a lot of fun. And and it's, it's going to be a, a lot of great fun. But let me tell you about Michael Neal, enough about all that. Um, he is a marine coordinator, water safety, and camera boat operator. Never had anybody with those qualifications. He um, runs uh, Moon River Kayak Tours, Bull River Cruises, and he has a lot of 
to 32 productions. Okay. And, and we're going to talk a little bit about those um, in, in greater detail. He is a Marine coordinator with SAG and IATSE. So he definitely knows his stuff. He's certified in all those uh, wonderful things. Um, water safety, scuba, ha, uh, boat instructions, kayaking, surfing. Um, do you give swimming lessons? <laughs> yeah, no, that's the one place uh, I don't <laughs> do. But, uh, you know, it's, this is a kind of a unique uh, aspect where I took all my life experiences and brought them to film. Mm -hmm. uh, versus some people get into film and build their experience. I just, I had to f uh, build the film aspect of it, but all the life experiences and skill sets that I uh, developed over a number of years really meshed into what uh, now I can provide for the film industry. Awesome, awesome. I mean, so you came at it from a different direction, which is great. Um, okay. And um, the reason I was asking about swimming because I can't swim. I'm, I've grown up here and I can't swim. You should see me in the pool. I don't go past that middle line in the pool, you know, the five foot. I've yeah. entered into like the six, seven foot, but that's as far as I'll go. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I can't swim. Um, but <laughs> uh, more importantly than that, um, he's also a, um, with, with a, being a Marine coordinator, he's also um uh, water safety for a cast and crew, uh, water safety, SAG, IATSE, and a uh, camera boat operator, which sounds extremely interesting in SAG. Um, yeah. So um, you've uh, certifications, and i got to read these because I'm not terribly familiar with marine certifications myself. <laughs> so um, correct me if I, if I misspeak on anything here. Yeah but he has a certification and license uh, USCG 100 ton NC master's license. Yeah. Near uh, coastal. That's the coastal. Uh, coast guard basically. So I can take passengers out for hire. Okay, cool. Very important in the industry. Very, well, in, in and outside the industry, yep. uh, P A D I open water instructor, um, uh, dive master, rescue diver, um, in ret, I, I'm going to have to spell it N R E M T, which means national registry, emergency medical technician or yeah, so. set medic, uh, which yep. is very important. Um, oh, there's more. There's another page. <laughs> there really is <laughs> of your certifications, uh, U S power boating instructor in, um, lifeguard certification, OSHA 10, um, which is, safety is is very big in the industry and now with uh, COVID-19 there's a lot of additional yeah. it's like 37 pages I read the whole thing of of how we proceed back to set and uh, uh let's just start off with the the big thing there um what are your thoughts on on coming back to sets safely and from the experience in in, in your position yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting transition. Uh, it's not going to, I'm hoping that we'll actually have a smaller show, like a $3 million, $4 million, something like a Hallmark, something simple, one month shoot, something that we can really kind of grasp uh, pretty simple locations that we can wrap our minds around and, if it, and mistakes will be made uh, in the industry, but we can at least start out with the best intentions and then adapt as we go. I think it's going to be a little bit longer for the major powerhouse uh, movies, the Disney's and stuff uh, to uh, kind of ramp up and then something in effect goes wrong. Then that's a big thing to try to stop or, sh you know, work with. Right. Uh, so that's my hope is that we actually start with a, um, you know, a, a small but not too small that's that's also the, the flip side of that is that if you do a small independent which there are a number that are looking at starting up sooner than later that do they have the budgets to do it safely um they may have the best intention but sometimes the budgets aren't there that is my biggest fear it, it's not the studios and the the union shows and stuff like that, that, that I'm is worried about because reading, reading um, that 37 page document, um, 
it's extremely detailed. I mean, we had a guest on here where we're breaking it down, talking about like pens. I'm holding an ink pen in my hand right now. If if we were working in the off, just the office for say, and and you, your my pen ran out of ink, and and I asked to borrow your pen, we can't do simple stuff like that, you know. And of course, with social distancing, but my worries are the smaller productions, the student films. Um, because that all got cut short and there's, I know there's so many up and coming filmmakers and they're like, well, we can do it safely. And, and I've seen, I'm in all those, those groups on social media. So I I see the comings and goings of a lot of different productions and I'm, I'm starting to see more casting calls and they're saying the industry we're open for business. The governor has declared that, but that's that's easier said than done. You know, that's like, we're open for, for business, but you know, there's, there's a, there's big risks factors that are could be life and death situations if not for yourself, but you know, for, for the people on the set, for actors, for, you know, whoever, uh, for everybody. And I'm worried about these little films that are going to just try to sneak in that aren't, you know, that aren't union that aren't, you know, don't have regulations and, and they, and then somebody, unfortunately it, it becomes a, a mini plague, you know, (laughs) within itself. And, uh, that's, yeah, that's about, what worries me the most. I agree. Uh, about 10 years ago, uh, we had a kind of a slate of uh, lower budget films, uh, non-union or right on the edge. And those ones, those are the ones that seem to always have the issues. Uh, I was lucky I wasn't involved in any of them. Uh, I don't, uh, but everyone I had t- talked to, you know, either people weren't getting paid or there was a safety issue, the sets weren't safely built. Or you know, they, everyone had these uh, different complaints. Uh, uh, certain permits weren't given or, or sought, and so those are the things like you uh, were just saying that we really kind of have to watch out for, and you know, hope uh, that it doesn't go wrong. Because when something goes wrong, it basically shuts down the whole industry for a period of time to try to figure out where it went wrong and that everyone's kind of gun shy uh, to try to deal with that situation. Yeah. And, you know, um, we're talking about big shows, little shows and, and stuff like that, but um, we have a bit of breaking news as we're going here recording this. Um, A show that you were working on um, or have worked on council of dads, NBC decided to pull the plug on it and not give it a second season renewal. And so right now, literally as as we're as we're doing this interview my facebook is, <laughs> is like just people are just on my social media and there's all these these tears and sad emojis and people yeah. are devastated that that council of dads that the, the show that really was a lot of savannah you know showed us savannah beautifully um is just not coming back and and you know we lost florida girls and right. they recently had um pretty much liquidated everything i did see a post that 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 nothing went to waste and that that's pretty awesome um what didn't sell um from the set deck and stuff like that was donated to several different um uh, businesses or organizations nonprofits, whatever you know um that could use that like furniture and different things like that but that's that's two productions down, and we still haven't technically started back up. So the fear the fear is is real. It's out there that you know, you know, depending on what COVID does, where we we all end up. This is twenty twenty just gonna continue to be this <laughs> crazy yeah. anomaly of a year, and. Um, I don't know. <laughs> no one's got the answer yet. You know, we, we, we're going to all crawl back in there and, you know, and, and try to see what's safe and say, okay, it's safe right here. And now we're going to move a little bit forward in. Okay. With these protocols. Okay. We're still safe. Oh, it's too soon to move to the next stage. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, yeah. and um, now you on a boat, a, a, a ship, you know, you're, you're, in such close proximity to cameramen, sound, sound department, uh, et cetera. Um, you know, how do you social distance on a boat, <laughs> you know, depending yeah, on the size but, of it? I yeah. It dep- again, like you say, it depends on the size and 
there will be having to be uh, mass worn and eye protection worn um, by most of the crew. Uh, there may be a few spots on the boat that that's not that is the six, eight, ten feet away. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the camera boats we use is you know thirty feet long, so the captain sometimes can be off, um, you know, away from everyone slightly. But, he, you know, we're using radios, uh, you know, in our ears to try to find out what we're, where we're going, what we're doing. But right. a lot of times it is close quarters. Uh, so it's going to have to be some precautions taken. And, you know, I think it's going to go the whole protocols of the everyone going on set has to be tested and then uh, tested again. And and tested again. I mean, it's going to be repetitive testing. Yeah. So, um yeah, it'll be an interesting endeavor. And, and probably the sound department end up on the dinghy behind the, behind the main boat. <laughs> well, it, it's definitely you know, going to be a lot essentials. more. There are going to be more boats involved. Boats, yeah. uh, right. you know, we're not going to be able to crowd uh, everybody that wants to be on the boat. Uh, right. And that's always a... Uh, everyone always wants to go for the boat ride um, on oh, set. Yeah. So we have to always cut that down anyway. It's always like, no, we can only have 10 on this boat done finished that's right. no more and they, well what about this person what about that no no this is an associate producer and they yeah you know and they're yeah, important like, yes like, but yeah no you're, you're gonna 10. watch it it's yeah. not 11 it's not 10 and a half you know you, know, yeah. you can't you can't you can't um <laughs> hang off the side well, of the boat it, or something. It, was, it was this interesting that in uh uh disney uh hold on one moment sorry In, with Disney, we actually had uh, some producers that were really good about really making the rules up that you couldn't do certain things. Hmm. And they, they were to the point where you could not go to the, sorry. You're fine. <laughs> oh, so good. Technical glitches, it's, 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 yeah. it's all good. These things happen. It's live. So yeah. So yeah. So so the it's interesting to work with uh, bigger companies because they can enforce rules that uh, and tell people no with uh, much more authority. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a great time working with Disney on uh, the Lady and a Tramp, and then uh, which was a, you know, a, a beautiful yeah. movie, by the way. A beautiful. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I call it a movie. I don't. I guess it's called a movie. Um, <laughs> we treat yeah. it as such. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's definitely. Um, yeah, that was a great project for me. Uh, we had some uh, interesting times. We uh, had a hurricane come through, so we had to uh, take our set completely uh, away and store it in a cr small protected area. Uh, the boat that we were using almost sank. We had to. Wow. Uh, it was a delay of about of a month to get it back into shape just so we could shoot on it. And so it, there's all kinds of different challenges that come in. And what I love about uh, being a Marine coordinator is that I get to work with everywhere from producers, uh, mm -hmm. every department, and it's just a really, uh, locations are, uh, I'm partner with locations on so many different uh, levels. So. It, it's to me, it's just a, a great place to be because I'm just part of a lot of different worlds. Yeah, but but you you are you're the end all be all on on that boat, correct? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. no, I, yeah. I no matter and, what and the producer says, you oh, you have to yeah. go. You know, well, this is my yeah. my ship. <laughs> yeah, well, when when we have the safety briefings, uh, right. I'll give them uh, beforehand and the safety meeting and. I will say when I say it's done, it's done. When we, when we're, we're, we're how many people, what we're going to do. If I see something that isn't right, I end it right there. And that's one of the advantages of being a little bit older than uh, some is that I don't have to worry quite as much. Mm -hmm. I can end something and I don't feel bad about it. I don't worry about my position. It's, uh, it's just, you, if I can say no, and I will say no uh, when I see something unsafe. It's, well, it I mean, a, it, you have to. You, you, yeah. you definitely, it definitely is a, necess a necessity to do that. Um, 
especially when well, you're dealing with water. I mean, it's, you know. And, and you know, one of the things that, um, one of the first movies I did was The Town with Ben Affleck uh, oh, yeah. down in Midway, Georgia, down by his house. And one night we were coming back from shooting. We had a camera on the front of the boat. And this is a film camera, so a very expensive $700,000 camera. And he, he had it up on uh, sticks and tripod. And he said, let's just go. And I was like, well, we need to take it down. And so he quest to taking it down, but he didn't stow it. And I said, aren't you worried about that camera, 700000 He said, it's insured and I have another one in the truck. And, I, and at that point, it gave me a little bit of realization that I could take with me further on was that equipment is replaceable. People are not. So when people say, you know, I have to protect the camera, I have to protect this, or this is so important, it's like, it's not worth getting hurt or getting killed over. Equipment can always be replaced. That is, that is a beautiful, be. that's a beautiful point, and you're 100% correct about that. You know, especially if you, I've been on sets, uh, um, I think we're, we were on Galveston together, and... Uh, I was, uh, that was my first, uh, gig in films. I was, uh, a trainee, uh, uh, um, actually I was, um, a, uh, Georgia Film Academy intern in the sound department. So, um, I, 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 I've come across you before we, I, we've, but this is like the first time we're actually meeting, I think, <laughs> you know, in more detail, right. but, um, I do know that, that, yeah, safety is like, like when you're dealing with like with the camera department, especially they, because of the expensive equipment inside the sound department, but definitely the camera department, they believe that, you know, they're, you can't, you can't come within so many feet of their <laughs> cameras, obviously. And, but when it comes to safety, you know, with Sarah Jones and all that, we learned a lot about right. safety and exactly. it reinforced what the film industry already knew how important things are. One of the things, and, and just and and I don't have it in front of me to reference, but I thought I saw on some of the guidelines about the work hour days were going to be no more than ten hours. If I saw if I saw that correctly, I could be incorrect about that, but I know that it was like ten to twelve. Right, and I, I I think I saw the same thing. And a lot of times, that's also might be shooting hours. So True. then you got all the people with the pre-calls, you know, the grips have an hour and two hour pre-call, camera has an hour and two hour pre-call. We usually have a two hour pre-call in the Marine Department a lot of times. And then you have after you, you know, you might wrap the camera, but do you, you know, everyone else is still wrapping out, the trucks are still moving. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it, I mean, I think it'd be great. Um, I don't think that means that everyone in the industry now has to worry about only making 10 hours in their day. I think that's going to be a, a good goal to go for, for maybe shooting. And, and we, I've been on a number of films recently that, that is the, that is, I mean, basically 10 hours is what they want for a shooting day. Uh, there, you know, I've been on other films that I've literally worked 18 hours a day on, uh, and those are no fun. They're no fun. Yeah. And, and there's Friday days and, and stuff. Yeah. Like well, that. That, yeah, that, that's an incredible way of ruining your, yeah. Week, ruining your uh, whole weekend um yeah <laughs> and then back on monday or whenever or maybe the next yeah, at day five in the morning. <laughs> but um yeah. it's gonna be i mean even even the points of like like rest between um you know and if someone comes down with something that's a whole different ballpark there they're completely banned from set obviously right and so the biggest question will, if someone comes down with something or they're feeling ill enough that you don't want them on set just in case before they can get their tests and results back, is does that person get paid for that time in some way? Yes. Um, and that's, that's a, that's a huge, uh, right now, uh, the industry doesn't have that uh, written into its contracts, but we're, the thought process is that there should be so that if someone says, well, I'm not feeling quite right, you know, I'm feeling off, um, do they get paid an eight hour day, a four hour day, like a lay day? You know what I mean? Do they get some type of compensation so that they don't work through their illness and try to hide their illness? Exactly. Uh, so that's what I think um, is on we're the bargaining table. You yeah, were taught the show must go on, you know, you got to push through, but let's say one of your department heads, you know, well, gets comes down with covid 
you know, and then they, maybe they didn't social distance. You, you don't know yeah. how many people, everybody's going to come in contact with, you know, to an extent. I mean, right. if, if, you know, if one person gets, even if it's a, if it's a PA or, or anybody, you know, crafty yeah. for some, you know, comes down with it, you know, and I know they're doing the, the food differently and there's a, you know, right. there'll, there'll be like these self-contained meals and the snacks will be prepackaged and stuff like that, you know, and so there won't be like food laying out that can get contaminated somehow, even though there's not been much food contamination that I, that I've heard of. I mean, there may right. be with, you know, we still, there's still a lot we don't know about COVID, but um, if you lose somebody for three, four days or two weeks, gosh, God forbid, you know, um, and what, what do you do? You know? Well, yeah. You know. Well, there's also been some talk where if, if a de- someone in that department does get sick, the whole department has to leave. So, and so, so no that's camera the, for, for two weeks? Well, no, no, they <laughs> fly in. A new, yeah. I, I think that, I think there's going to be a lot of, Hey, I need you now in Atlanta. Uh, I need you now in Charleston. Uh, because we had someone get sick in that department and we need to bring in a whole new team to keep things moving forward. And, and so. does the whole, and, and you brought up a point a minute ago, well, what about the whole team? Let's say the entire, let's say the sound mixer gets sick or does the utility, does the boomer, do they all get paid well, that's you know, a big, for, you know, yeah. if they have to be out for two weeks, God forbid, you know, just because yeah. they were exposed, even if they were, social distancing the best you could um we know it's already going to affect background actors we've talked about that on a previous show here on savannah on film there's going to be less background actors um yeah and that's that's a scary thought to that to that whole community of background actors and you know bigger budgets they can afford to just digitally insert people you know smaller films aren't going to be able to afford that smaller films may not even be able to afford this and I wish I had it in front of me. I, I do not. But the the person that's in charge of like the onset safety, it's um, yeah, like COVID. There's a, uh, yeah, there's an H in there somewhere. I, I forgot what it's called here. Um, I don't have it in front of me. Dog on it. But um, uh, so as as set medic, are you? My question. I guess my next question is, are you kind of elevated? to an extent are you would you naturally would you be also the marine coordinator and the set medic i mean no. well I, or, I can yeah i in both things you can't be two roles at one time anyway right. so you got to kind of separate some of those things out so now we're i might be able to do something would be i could because we're trying to limit the number of people on a show i could be a marine coordinator for a week and then be a set medic for a week so that we don't have to bring in another set medic to augment the group. There's going to have to be more set medics, but also the person that's in charge of the COVID aspect of, of testing and tracing and uh, precautions yeah. cannot also be the set medic out there doing the health of on the general crew. Okay. It has to be a separate process or a separate person Person. because there has to be a person that's kind of in charge of just COVID stuff and that is monitoring people coming in, monitoring things, how people are doing things, you know, how's that department working? Are they doing the things they're supposed to do? Are they, uh, are they receiving product and cleaning it before it goes out to set? How is the back office operating? So that person can't be the person tending to the immediate health out with the camera or right, right. if someone has a construction crew heat stroke or something on set right. so uh, yeah that, that makes that so makes I think total for, sense you know we have we, we're going to have to um set it the the medic uh department is going to go uh the number of medics that are going to be needed are going to go up um and then like i say we're going to actually have to have a separate whole person and i think they're still the last time I heard, they're still trying to figure out the uh, qualifications that they want to have for that COVID coordinator or whatever and term you want to call it. I wonder what like pay level that's going to be. Is it going to be different? Is it going to be equivalent to a, it, what a set medic would? It would have to be make, at minimum more? that much or higher. I, 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 if I was the person, I would be, it would be higher. Um, 
I mean, because you're you're taking on additional responsibilities. You're right. um, there's going to be a lot more work. There's going to be a lot of record keeping with it. You're going to have to be logging people in every day or setting up a process. You know, you're going to have to ask the questions of each. And other industries have it where before you go to work, you type on your phone that yes, I I, I haven't. I feel okay. I haven't had a cough. I, you know, da 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 da. Right. You answer the questions. It gives you like a green light on your phone. You walk into set with your green light with the date on it. They say okay. They they maybe scan you for temperature, and uh, uh, if, if everyone's gonna have to basically say I feel well and I have no temperature and you know that I haven't done I haven't been exposed knowingly to anyone in the past uh, number of days. Right, right. Just like when you go to a doctor's office. Exactly. Like these today. Nowadays, yeah. Yeah, nowadays. Uh, well, we're going to be uh, right back. We've got a few av- advertisements we got to talk about here. Um, and we're going to be back with Marine Coordinator, Water Safety um, Genius, <laughs> Camera Boat Operator, and more, uh, Michael Neal. Uh, we'll be back in, in a few moments here on Savannah on Phil. Now you have a chance to support both Savannah Independent Artists and WRUU during this shelter-in-place order to stop the spread of COVID-19. Creatives in Need is a group of independent artists hosted by the Roots Up Gallery, which is collaborating with WRUU during this shelter-in-place to offer an online art gallery at www.rootsupgallery.com. For every work of art sold at this online gallery, the artists receive 80% from the sales and 20% goes to WRUU and its programs like Art on the Air. Interested listeners can go to www.rootsupgallery.com to start shopping today. This is a message from the Georgia State Department of Public Health. Social distancing means minimizing contact with people. It also means that if you are near someone in public, try to stay at least six feet away. The less contact people have with one another means the less opportunity for the virus to spread. Slowing the spread of the virus means that we can keep our healthcare system from becoming overwhelmed. More information can be found at dph.georgia.gov. WRUU brings you the most diverse and passionate local radio programming on the air in Savannah. This all-volunteer and nonprofit community radio station accepts no money from any form of government. Our diversity and independence is made possible only through the generous financial support of listeners like you. We rely on your annual and ongoing monthly contributions to cover the many costs associated with bringing you our broadcast and web programming. If you are a contributor, thank you. If you're not yet a contributor, please show your appreciation of the role WRU plays in your life by becoming a contributor in any amount. You can donate quickly and easily by credit card or check. Just find the donate and subscribe links at WRU.org. Thanks for listening to and supporting WRUU. This is WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with Global Soul. And we're back here with Michael Neal, Marine Coordinator, Water water Safety Guru, uh, Camera Boat Operator, and so much more. Um, This gentleman has worked on uh, Cancel of Dads, which uh, we just talked about um, earlier in the show. It has not been renewed for a second season. Um, I had a sound effect here, but I'm not going to use it. But it's the, you know, the the sad, the sad sound, aww, or whatever. Um, But um, he's Marine Coordinator, Water Safety on that. Um, He's also been on Falcon and Winter Soldier from Marvel Phase 4. And being a geek, uh, I certainly, <laughs> anything he could tell me about that, I'd love to hear. Um, just a few of the uh, other productions, Ozark on Netflix, which is wi- widely popular. Um, Harry Haft, um, it was um, on. Um, Lady and the Tramp, which was a fantastic film on Disney+. Plus. And uh, just like Cancel of Dads, I think really showcased Savannah in such a, 
a beautiful way, a uh, fantastic way. Um, uh, you were also on Jim and I Man, uh, The Front Runner, The Beach House, uh, which was with Hallmark. Uh, you were stunt and marine coordinator for that. Um, Peanut Butter Falcon. I mean, this is a list of like anything that's, this is a who's who list and you're, and it's just, you know, right down the page here, uh, all of these ones you're on. Um, uh, Love by the Shore, also on Hallmark, Galveston, Underground, um, and Walking Dead, <laughs> which is awesome uh macgyver baywatch uh uh is it live by night or that that was the yeah. ben affleck film right yeah that yeah. was down um, one of the ones down here by his house yeah um anchorman 2 <laughs> that's that's awesome you, you 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 get some um stuff for that some some yay for anchorman 2 uh that was, you were in, that was my uh, i'm sorry Oh no, that was my first major uh, uh, production uh, as a department head. That was in and it's kind of funny because I had actually um, visioned, uh, I took a visioning class and uh, I wrote it down saying I want to be a department head for a major motion picture. And two wow. weeks later, I got the call from, from uh, uh, Paramount saying, can you come down and be a department head for us down here in St. Simons to do Anchorman 2? So it's kind of an interesting Wow. Have you tried to envision the lottery numbers? I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't quite work. It doesn't that way. work that yeah. way. You know. A lot of people uh, do think that though. That's, they, yeah, that that's naturally the first thing, you know. <laughs> Can you vision what do you yeah. vision for me? Yeah. Um uh you were also in the town, which was another Ben Affleck film, correct? Yeah. We and, did the uh, final scene down by his house. Uh, that was a uh it was actually a reshoot. Uh, of the they reshot the ending because they did a test audience and they didn't like it they didn't they thought the movie kind of sucked the way wow. it had been originally shot and so he took that into consideration reshot the very end of it and uh then they uh came out to be critically acclaimed it came out like a great film yeah uh that and that was a uh so they used a different part uh, um director of photography for that reshoot oliver wood uh, really good guy and mm -hmm. we're down at Ben Affleck's house hanging out that's what we we all kind of hung out together just hanging out uh, with it was Affleck. only How awesome it was only that? like 30 people in the whole uh, production at that point maybe 30 and we all just we'd have dinner around the table around his table at his house and so it was a it was a interesting uh that was the really the so, one of the, the yeah, yeah. No, you've hung out with Superman and Batman because he also played George Reeves' uh, yeah. story, <laughs> Superman and Bat Batman. <laughs> so, yeah, that's 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 awesome. Yeah, he seems like such a a great guy, Ben Affleck. I mean, he really does. And uh, yeah, just that must have been cool. Um, and um, gosh, you've uh, let's talk a little bit about your experience on Council of Dads. I think we've got, as of the recording of this, we've got uh, about two more episodes left. Yeah. And I hope it they wrap it up um, nicely. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, I, yeah. hate, I hope it ends. I hope the season ends. I don't know how it ends, but I, I hope yeah. it ends on a way that kind of wraps the series up or, or, you know, I don't know. Well, I don't think they can really do that too much because right. they were hoping Doesn't for imagine. like a a multi season uh, run on it. And so, but I you think know, if you, if you look at the at, at the the what they've covered in this show, I mean, it almost feels like they've done several seasons within one season. I mean, they've covered a yeah. lot of terrain story wise, and and um, some some even you know groundbreaking stuff. Uh, for network television, so um, you know, yeah. kudos to that. I know, I know everybody's sad to see <laughs> see it go, and uh, yeah. you know, there's yeah. there's nothing I, happy I, about it except the good memories, I guess. Yeah, I wish the they would give it another chance, and partly because if you go back and you look at some of the big hits uh, from previous times, whether it be Friends or uh, Big Bang Theory, and you look at season one, it's always almost a shell. And and you you go if you, when you look back you go that wasn't even funny or that was uh, the, the characters are so right. one dimensional and only after multiple seasons do they start do they fleshing them it? out do they start the actors themselves start really kind of becoming their own people within them 
Uh, and so, you know, you, you have to cram so much in, and this one had so much backstory that you had to kind of push in that it, did, and, you know, they, and, and I believe that the network screwed up um, in the way they premiered it. They, they put it on at 10 o'clock at I night agree. and they pushed it a, a couple of weeks. Then they put it on the wrong time. Then they did, then they flip flopped the, you know, some times back and forth. To me, they should reshow it right now, right after it ends, reshow it again through the summer because they don't have anything out there anyway. So why not? That's, that's the point put, I was put it at a jump to next. Yeah. Put, put, it, put it at a different time, like on a different day and different time so that you can get a whole different crowd. And then they would have two sets that when the new season comes out, they could then say, you know, we have this uh, group out there that will really want to watch it. So, well, and then they know, already we've, have seen, we've seen campaigns for, for shows that have come back. And I know there's been some, uh, I don't know if it, what, whatever the, um, some people had direct links to NBC and they were sharing them right. on social media and said, tell them why we need season two of this. And when I saw those coming, that's usually a harbinger of, of not so good things to come. But there's been many times there was a show, I think NBC brought back Timeless. If you remember a little time yeah, travel show, yeah. they brought it back for yeah. a season and wrapped it up. And, and we, we, me and my, my wife and I were big fans of that show and we were kind of sad to see it, it end so abruptly and it didn't have much of an ending. And then they brought it back for another season and then they wrapped it up nice and neat, you know, and, and, you know, of course this COVID has a lot to do with it. You know, the, the pandemic yeah. has, you know, how do they shoot anything? I mean, they could shoot stuff. They could do it different locations. They could use the social distancing and all the, all these, these new protocols and it, it could probably be done, but um, I know everybody's just, you know, sad about it. Um, yeah. And well, uh, I'm, the fear is that like they did during some of the writer strikes years ago, that's when reality TV um, really took off. Um, and it wasn't because mm -hmm. as much of the um, people wanted it, it was because they had nothing to shoot. So they went out and started these programs. And the, I think the, the certain reality TV is great. I, I actually was on a reality TV show myself, so I can't even, uh, uh, my first introduction to the industry was I was a contestant on a show. So- Can you, can uh, you say? Yeah, it was Catch Costa Rica. It was my first. Uh, okay. was right yeah, there. yeah, I see that number. Yeah, that, so two thousand eight. Yeah, so what happened was uh, I was picked to go down to Costa Rica with six men, six men and six women in competition fishing, and oh, wow. we, yeah, it was uh, a bunch of scad grads, uh, good guys <laughs> that uh, put together the show. They had been funded by uh, kind of a. a a big larger than life character, Greg Rudell, who had made his money in Dish TV. And he said, if you do my reality fishing show, then I'll give you the money to do a documentary uh, that you want to do. So they did that for him. And uh, we went down there and shot that. And it was probably the um, shot the most in unusual way because there was no one that had any experience on reality TV. So we were like, what do you want us to do? They go, just be yourselves. So there was, it was really, truly reality. There was no script at all. There was no, wow. it, it, we were, it, it, was, it was a great time. There was probably more friction at times between cast and crew than there was between the cast. The cast uh, all became friends. Uh, sub, two of the contestants are married now and have a couple children. Oh, wow. And so we, a lot of us still keep in touch with each other, both the cast and crew. That's great. Um, when I uh, did uh, Anchorman 2, I hired uh, our water safety guy from Costa Rica to come up and help me with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, it's a, it's a really, uh, it was a great introduction to the industry, but it also showed me uh, some of the, the pitfalls of the industry. And I've done everything from Bad Girls Club, Atlanta. Uh, I did that. Uh, there was a the Savannah one that was horrible. Uh, I don't know. But, but yeah, so I've done everything from reality to small productions to uh, big blockbuster stuff. So it's, it's a good rounding 
type of uh, situation. Yeah, I mean, just looking at at your um, your film industry experience, it's it's actually it's like everything that's come through Savannah and 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 more. You know, it's very expansive and and, and a lot of good work, um, a lot of great memories. I'm sure. From, oh yeah. What was? Can you say what one of your favorite um, moments was on set? You know, whether, you know, I think in, in the boat uh, probably o- o- overall, the boat. yeah, probably overall, um, the peanut butter falcon. I scouted that two years before mm-hmm. we shot it. So I was oh, with wow. guys when it was a hundred thousand dollar film and we were just going to shoot it with 20, uh, a little splinter unit of 20 people on the fly. It was just going to be this little thing. And then uh, they got some funding and we kind of built it up and then it got bigger and so it was i saw their dream i told a lot of people i said you have to be on this show and whether it be locations or different groups like that it's like when the show comes you got to get on it we this is one you 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 can't miss miss. and uh because i i knew by reading the script and being with the guys that this was going to be a show that is a once in a lifetime and uh, it was going to be that heart show that you just have that you just you know, feel so proud of. So um, there's been, we've talked good experiences and not so good experiences so far on, on set. Um, what do you think um, our industry needs? I know, I know we're in right now, our industry is kind of on the hitting the pause button and trying to unpause, but, what do you think sure. the Savannah film industry overall, what do we, what, what can we do better? What have we done good and, and what can we do better? Well, of course, we all know that the sound studio is soundstage uh, yes. dedicated and, you know, uh, whether it would have worked or not, but when the city uh, downplayed the fairgrounds as a, a site for a soundstage uh it was to me incredibly, I think it was more of a political uh, thing where it was announced that they were gonna put a stage there and it hadn't been vetted quietly beforehand. And it really, um, so I think it just kind of, it just kind of gave itself a, a, a black eye before it even started out the gate. And, but I think that a great would at least- location. It, it, yeah, uh, we shot uh, Baywatch out of there. We put big water tanks in there. We had some Mm -hmm. interior stuff going on there. Uh, So yeah, it had the capability of uh, being a central location. If they could have done a decent build out in there, I I just, you know, and now what, eight years later, they're saying, oh gee, maybe we should put a a studio there. And you're like, well, we could have been working and had more projects come in and maybe we'd already have, uh, you know, a series or two already established here rather than we keep on trying to get that first real series to come in and be our cornerstone. I mean, Charleston has a number of them. I mean, they had army wives, they have, oh, yeah. you know, they have, uh, they have, right. They, they have a number of, of kind of projects that keep on coming back to them and, and they, because the infrastructure's have, there. It, yeah. And, and they have, but they have limited crew. All the crew has to come from Savannah and from, well, there's a small crew there. I can't say I, no. I've had, I've, I've talked to people that have been on some big projects that have come through Savannah and told me that, you know, sometimes 95% of what comes in comes out of LA and, and you know, it's a shame, you know, we, we need, we need this. And this is something we've talked about in the two years I've been doing this show infrastructure. And there's always talk, you know, it heats up for a while that, yes, they're, they're, there's some stuff pl- they're planning. Someone's always planning something. And then yeah. it seems to fall through or get caught in some kind of red tape hurt, hurdles or whatever. And then, of course, the pandemic just threw, you know, threw the, the right. entire playbook out the window for everything. Um, and I know our film commission is, is doing all they can to, to, to bring productions here, but if if you if you're a sound person and you and you can you know or a grip and electric especially you know and you've got you know you or and you've got a sound stead dedicated sound stage you don't have to you know tote stuff here and there you know you can you have a place that that can function i mean if tyler perry can build his own set of studios um 
then I think Savannah can find a way to do the same, you know, you know, some sound stages, one or one sound stage would be good. Two or three would be even better. You know, it's, you, right. you have to, you have to spend a little money to make, to make a lot of money. And, um, there's, I drive by several abandoned buildings on yeah. almost a daily basis. And I'm like, wow, that would make a great sound stage. You know, you definitely have to soundproof it though, because it's in the, you know, the, yeah. the airline traffic uh, or whatever route, but you know, it could be done, you know, and um, you know, and we got to work on that. We got, we got to decide how serious we are. And, you know, I feel like we're going to need more sound stages that we're going to need more physical spaces because we're going to have to do things in more increments. Maybe like the Mandalorian is doing, they build like a, a smaller set here and then they build a smaller set here. You know, the, the way that they're doing their production is maybe the new way that we go instead of, you know, I mean, you could take a big soundstage and you can certainly, you know, partition it off and, and social distancing could certainly be part of the equation. Uh, I'm sure. Right. You know? Yeah. So, you know, that's something we've got to work. I think we've still got to work on. I want to ask you um, Falcon and winter soldier. Um, I know it filmed here briefly. Um, yeah. And um I know they didn't finish filming. Um, no, they can you say how problems. long they are, or can you say anything? Actually, I don't. I don't want to put you. Yeah, in I can't of, say too much. I know. I don't want you to. There, yeah, there's some semi-public uh, stuff out there. Is that they were supposed to go to uh, Puerto Rico, and right. I think Puerto Rico had the earthquakes earthquake? at the time. Yeah, right. And so that kind of threw them off, uh, and so they had to re regame. Uh, and then uh, I think they were just probably getting close to wrapping. Uh, but then pandemic kind of hit. So I think that just slowed them down uh, to the, they couldn't get that final couple right. weeks in that they probably needed to get in. Uh, I, d you yeah, know, I think, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off there. No. Oh, okay. Um, I just think, you know, I thank goodness the pandemic didn't actually hit in 2019 because we had so many tentpole movies in such a great year. I mean, even Savannah, you know, with all the films that came through um, yeah. and, and TV series and stuff like that. And we knew 2020, at least box office wise, would be a, probably a little bit lower because 2019 was a record shattering year just, just for Marvel alone. I mean, they almost yeah. single-handedly ruled the industry last year and then, which they're kind of probably thankful money wise <laughs> since yeah. all the parks are still closed and everything else is closed. Uh, and um, I know Disney's had to push, at least in California had to push back opening their parks for a couple more weeks and they were trying like mid July might be the end of July. You know, it depends on this whole pandemic thing and it, it's not going away, you know? Um, uh, <laughs> so we've got to yeah. find this courageous way to move forward. And I know these safety specifications that are being pushed forward, I, I think are going to put us all in the right direction. Um, we could talk forever, but we've, we've got to round up this part of the show just for the sure. radio. And then we, we will talk some more about some other things in the video just for a little bit longer uh, for our YouTube content. But um you have um you are the owner of bull river cruises uh moonlight river kayak tours located in savannah georgia and um that's at um www.bullriver.com and www you know the w's <laughs> moonriverkayak.com um where are some uh, other places people can reach you if they're trying to get a hold of michael neal and they need your expertise on set yeah basically if you just google mike neal marine coordinator i come right up uh that's one of the things i've tried to do is make it easy for people to get in contact with me for projects uh and yeah i i, I put my stuff out there pretty pretty often pretty well okay well michael um I, I thank you so much for being here you bought a unique perspective to the show i'm always looking for very interesting guests and you certainly are one of those sir and i i thank you very much uh for for being a part of savannah on film well thank you for having me okay and uh uh anyway if you're listening on the radio then you or online at wruu.org you can uh hop on over to the youtube channel um and then you can see the rest of our talk here with michael neal and i uh, just want to say i'm ed susovich here a host of savannah on film and we thank you um for for listening and watching and um just remember that savannah film is a voice for the savannah film industry 
You have been listening to another episode of Savannah on Film, where we give a voice to the Savannah film community. Please like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter. This program was originally broadcast on 107.5 FM in Savannah, Georgia, and worldwide on www.wruu.org. Join us next time for more intriguing insights into the vibrant Savannah film community here at Savannah on Film. And we are back here uh, on YouTube uh, here at Savannah on Film. And um, we are talking with Michael Neal, who is a Marine coordinator, water safety uh, professional, uh, camera boat operator, scuba, boat, boat handling, boating instructor, kayaking, surfing. He's, there's not much this man can't teach you. And, and he's been uh, taking us to school on some things today here on Savannah on Film. And, I want to welcome welcome everybody who's joining us now on YouTube or hopefully has been watching the video and or joining us from the radio or wherever. Um, welcome, welcome back. Uh, Mike, Michael has been in several films that have come through the Savannah area. And um, what got you kind of interested um, in being part of like the film industry? Is there, was there sure. kind of a, you know, what did you do before generally? And then, when, when did you decide, okay, this is what I've got to do. This is what I want to pursue. Yeah, so I've uh, had a very uh, great life of experiences. And I've been everything from a uh, foreign military advisor, living in Tunisia, Turkey, Saudi. Uh, then I uh, basically got tired of that life and decided to switch it over to being on the water. So I went to school at Maine Maritime Academy and got a marina a degree in marina operator and uh Oh, operations. So I have a, a degree. It's kind of like basket weaving on the water, but no, no, it's uh, small business management on the water. So I have that. And then I was a dive, in, uh, I was a dive instructor on a cruise ship for a while. And so I came to Savannah as a uh, to uh, work on the water. And I ran a marina and started a boat tour company. And Eventually, I got kind of introduced to the film industry by going uh, on that reality TV show. And then yeah. uh, that kind of piqued my uh, curiosity and my interest. And I was able then to get my, I went from basically zero in the film industry to being a department head. Uh, my first film was uh, Savannah, uh, which was a great little independent in, film. In like, let's see, 2011, 2012. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was a great film. And that, the first AD was a really wonderful uh, gentleman, Julian Wall. And he said, Mike, you should really consider doing this as a, a living. Uh, you know, you're good at this. We, we've worked together now on this film for months. And he said, let me give you a couple contacts in the industry. And he gave me uh, a couple of the best guys in the world, Rico Browning and Dan Malone. And both of them are uh, big guys in the, in the industry. And so I started uh, chatting with them and emailing and texting every once in a while and keeping in touch with them. And eventually, because I knew I wanted to work with both of them. They were both great guys, uh, like I say, leaders in the industry. And I just kind of put it out there, out of that visioning that I was going to work with these guys. And I did. Uh, I've been both assistants for both of them. Uh, and uh, I consider us all friends. We talk uh, on a pretty constant basis. Uh, Dan uh, right now has Ozark, so I've uh, worked with Dan uh, last year on that. I was a Savannah uh, guy, I guess, uh, in charge of the big explosions downtown uh, and a part of the build out and everything of all yeah. that uh, riverboat scenes. So what 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 was that like? That that was sounds pretty fantastic. Yeah, that was a uh, great. So uh, we it was incredible the uh, build that they did. They took the 
the interiors of the Savannah River Queen and made a full casino. I mean, oh, you wow. would walk in, you would, you would it was a full operating casino. Oh. Um, and they did it in, you know, a couple of weeks. So we did big builds out by uh, uh, the crab, uh, Joe's Crab Shack downtown. Mm -hmm. But then when we went to shoot it, we had to um, basically have the explosions and fire on uh, the opposite casino, the one over by the Westin. Okay. So we shot it from First Street one day, and then we went and did it over on uh, Hutchison Island the, the next day or a couple of days later. And mm -hmm. it was incredible because uh, I was probably... 30 feet away from the explosions on the roof of the River Queen because I was responsible for the safety of that vessel. Right. Uh, so there was only six of us on the boat uh, when that happened because uh, we had the special effects guys, we imagine. had the fire marshal, the, the captain of the boat itself, the owner of the boat, and then myself. Uh, we were the only ones allowed on the boat during that whole uh, situation because it could end up being a dangerous situation. But, yeah, um, uh, the, the guys are so pro that I mean, there isn't in six hours later they were sailing that ship for for uh, to tourists. Wow. They had it broken down in six hours. That's amazing. That's amazing yeah. the turnaround on that. And I mean, when you're dealing with explosions, pyrotechnics, and stuff like that, that's that's some serious um, safety protocols. I, I know that oh, have yeah. to be in place for that. Yeah, the special effects guys that we have that I've worked with have all been pros and they're they're really good at what they do. And it's amazing. You think that they're burning something that's going to be destroyed and then, you know, they, they, they turn down the flame bars and they go in and it's like not even a, a scratch on it. You're like, how did you do this? I mean, they're just really good. Uh, Baywatch, uh, I was on the boats that would light the fire uh, we had flame bars underneath the water, and so we'd have to race in, light them, and then race back out so that they could wow. shoot. That was done up on a lake, uh, uh, up a little pond inland from here. Wow. Um, what was it like working with The Rock? <laughs> he, he, he's, he has uh, a great personality. He, he really... Uh, brings a lot. Same thing with uh, Will Smith. Uh, the people oh, yeah. that really um they have they have something to them and they they know how they make their money from you know the fans and the people that follow them and they give back the ones that are that i've seen that are, have been very successful and, and have been the people that they realize that and they want to make sure people get what they want uh even uh uh will um on the uh, um, I'm trying to think what show it was uh, when we were down doing Anchorman. Anchorman too, uh, like Will Ferrell. Yeah, Anchorman too. Yeah, Will Ferrell. I mean, he was in the water, freezing. You know, just I mean, just totally. It was unbelievable the strength he had to use to do it. And then when he got out, you know, they bundled him up, put him in a car, but he he stopped the car, got out and chatted and and said hello to people, you know, in where you know, he could have just driven away, you know, right, but he right. got out and really made sure people got, they had been waiting to see him all day. Um, and they, they were able, he was able to get out and greet him and be, uh, you know, a real entertainer. Yeah. So, and, and you feed, I'm sure they feed off of that energy, you know? And so that was, and, and like, yeah, the, I know Chris Evans when he did uh, gifted down, down this area here, you know, they, there are stories about how, how just, incredibly kind he was to the to everyone you know and you know i i don't think that's something you can fake the rock i mean he's will smith they they seem just so genuine you know yeah. of course every, everybody has a bad day but when when you're famous right. you, you don't get a a bad day <laughs> but uh except um we know that uh, will smith does not like sand nets <laughs> no and what was funny was he was that scene was cut out of the movie uh, we spent a number of days down with the sand gnats doing that scene that he was complaining about. And uh, I don't know if it was the gnats or what, but that scene was not, uh, did not show up in the movie. Mm. Uh, so it's kind of a funny aspect. Yeah, and, um, it's a shame that, that we didn't have the technology in theaters to, to show that in the true, you know. No. There's only 10 theaters in America, that, or, or 10, 10 theaters in the 
in the world that you could see that film and the way it was shot. Right. Uh, we had to go to um, a friend of mine who, who worked on Gemini Man. We went up to Beaufort. I think it was the closest place that we could see it. And was it, I'm trying to think of the resolution or whatever in 60 frames or whatever it was, yeah, but, it, but it wasn't, it wasn't the ultimate of, of right. what Ang Lee's vision was. And, right. and uh, he actually got to sit in one day um, after work with Ang Lee and they were trying out that 3d technology right. and, and a, and he got to see life of Pi kind of redone or portions right. of it. And that was so fantastic. And, and, yeah. uh, and it's incredible. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And that film, I know that that was a film, Gemini man. It it was a story that had been around for about 20 years. So it, it felt the story felt a little dated, but com, by, by conventional standards, but what I saw, it was just so compelling and, and, and I enjoyed it. I mean, I was psyched for the film from day one, and I still enjoy the film. I think it was a good right. film. It could have been better. Yes, it could have been better. But visually, I know Ang Lee is like one of those directors like George Lucas. He's always trying to push the medium, like James yeah. Cameron. Um, so when they do something, you know, they're thinking about what you're seeing, what you're hearing, and sometimes they're creating technology. Most times they are, you know, to advance films to, to like that next level. And it's something you don't get from streaming. It's something you you know you know you can't get unless you have a really even if you have a high priced home theater <laughs> set up. Yeah. You know, um, so um, but yeah, 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 having having actors like that, um, having those great experiences with with. Um, um the talent is is it just makes it so much better and it just it changes the atmosphere of the set i know um, oh will smith walks onto a set and he brings so much energy and it's like sunshine you know, isn't it yeah like, it's you know? all of a sudden boom everyone he's hyping everyone up you know we're gonna have a great day boom you know and uh yeah really kind of brings you up and and gets you going for that day uh, you know, the last thing you want is a bunch of measurable people walking around on a 14 hour day, you know, right. It um, happens sometimes. What were like some of the most, I may have asked you this, but I'll ask you again, if I didn't, <laughs> what are like some of the most unusual places you filmed or, or been a part of, you know, in filming? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, Costa Rica is very beautiful. Yeah, and we yeah, spent, uh, three months, uh, filming down there, uh, uh, mostly very cold right a cold climate right no mosquitoes <laughs> <laughs> uh, well one of the places we were is zancudo beach which is uh mosquito beach um so we had a, a number of mosquitoes there but uh uh no it was gorgeous uh and the water beautiful and mm -hmm. you know we were catching sailfish and and wow. things like that so it, it was it was a, a great experience but uh you know Every, you know, some of the different other things, uh, MacGyver up at Stone Mountain, uh, the mm -hmm. lake up there, we've turned that into uh, Switzerland. And, uh, <laughs> um, and, 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 and movie magic. Yeah, and it's incredible, you know, some of the nighttime scenes that you do, you know, you, ha you put out atmosphere and you have that smoke on the water. And, you know, I will say on a number of uh, productions, I've been the, the person that had to make the waves. Uh, so the camera could catch the glint on the water type of thing. You know, oh, cool. now they're just making waves. But it, it, you know, shooting on the water and being there at dawn, being there at dusk, you know, you just get some unbelievable uh, shots. And, and oh, yeah. you know, if you take every day yeah. and you, you, you try to find that beauty, uh, a lot of times you can really kind of, it adds to your life, you know. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, so if you weren't, if you weren't doing what you're doing now in the film industry, what, what would you be doing? <laughs> Have you? Yeah. Well, you know, if, if, if the film industry goes away tomorrow, you know, what, what, what's the next uh, adventure? Uh, probably um, life coach uh, to some degree uh, cool. might be one of the avenues. Uh, and then uh, I have, I, I have never lacked in having the desire or to, do different projects and start new businesses. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm a person that just, uh, I'm always amazed when people go, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm, and then sit on the couch for the next, you know, year 
I'm like, what are you talking about? I mean, I can go sell sandwiches on the street. I mean, <laughs> there, there, you know, there's no one doing this at this park. Why isn't anyone doing this here? Uh, you know, I, I go to place, I visit places and I go, oh my God, no one's doing a, a ghost tour here. Why, why, you know, I could come here and do a ghost tour or whatever it is. You know, I, I just I find it amazing when people can't do that. Uh, but some people are wired differently. I'm a uh, entrepreneur uh, mindset type of person. Uh, so, so always looking, always looking for the the next the next new thing that that hasn't been discovered. Well, that niche. And, and, yeah, and that's what's great about film is that every project is the next thing, and so you're really um, and you're with so many creative people. You're working as a team to produce a beautiful product at the end. That's your goal is to, you know, work with the grips, the electrical and the camera and the, and the talent and, and the director and, and, and kind of meld it into and give you that uh, product at the end that you can be proud of. Right. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, I'll watch a film and just be watching, you know, how did it come to, you know, did we produce what I wanted and what the act, what the uh, director and the director of photography really wanted? Uh, and that, that's to me is a critical part of it, but it, it's just getting all those people and whether it be the crafts or the creatives and putting them together and, and getting this product that you can just, you know, see and feel. Mm -hmm. I just, that, that, that's to me is the beauty of working in the film industry. Yeah, there's. It's hard for me to watch a film now and not be, well, you know, okay. What what was the time and when they filmed this? What was the you know the sun angle of the sun? When you know, like I can I can pick out a lot of those things inconsistencies. Like you know, it was it was broad daylight and then the next scene it's dark, it's pitch black. You know, and it's supposed to be the next moment. You know, it's those little things. And then, you know, like could we have filmed this differently? I think about. You know, if I'm sound mixing, I think about, you know, is was there a better way to capture sound in this particular scene or, you know, and so it's, it's interesting to watch a film. It's like when I watched Galveston, that was an example of a film that I got to see physically, you know, made being on set and um, the, the finished product once it was edited down to me was a totally different film. Um, <laughs> It just, you know, I, I felt it was a much, a much better film personally. I felt it was a much better film when it was being filmed than, than the end product. Um, I thought it, you know, it just had a, it had a different look to it, but a pro, some of the most fun I've ever had on the set. And that was the first time I was on set. So I was uh, green as can be, you know, but um, learning and uh, years ago, but, but I, I enjoyed the experience and been on many films since. And, and uh, each one brings a different a different aspect of of who you work with and and how professional they are and and uh, I'm sure I'm sure like you, you've kind of touched on that every film is is the next big challenge, right? Yeah, and you know the also the people you work with, uh, you know, establishing those relationships. That's what uh, you know. Hopefully people getting into the film industry realize is that this is a uh, industry of relationships. You don't even have to be the best. You have to be able to work with other people and do a decent job. Because if you're the best and you can't get along with other people, then there's no, we don't want you on set. I mean, sorry. I mean, right. you can be the best, the best blank, but if you can't work with people, then you don't need to be there. So, right. and especially it, in, in these, these new situations, you're going to, there's a lot of people that are going to have to learn that, you know, well, not a lot, but you know, people are going to have to learn a new way. Of, we're all going to have to learn a new way of working and, yeah. and it's going to be inconvenient at times. It's going to slow down things and, and we're going to be tempted to take those shortcuts, but know that it's better off not to take the shortcut because safety is everything. And it, and that matters more than, then how you get to the end product you have to do it's incredibly safety uh being safety conscious and um so having having that bit of um did you say yeah your um well you so you've had some osha training obviously yeah and all that so did that does that make you look at films differently than 
then, you know, you may have had you, I guess you would have had to have that training anyway in what you do. You'd have to have some. Right. I, I come from a safety background, being a dive instructor, being a, a captain. I, I've had to, I do a safety briefing before every trip that I do. So uh, it actually put me in a situation where I'm actually more conscious of it. And we actually, uh, soon after Sarah Jones had her tragic uh, accident or uh, tragedy was we did a safety uh for film here in savannah and a number of us kind of put together a little program for not um a lot of times unions have their safety programs and they kind of follow protocols that like you say independents or student films might not and they don't have the access to it so we developed a at the time a both it was before the georgia film academy Right. So we uh, put together a safety um, round table. There was a number of different people. There were some people from OSHA. Uh, there was myself and there was a couple other folks uh, there that kind of put together some things saying, these are things you should be looking at if you're going to make a film or be in film. And then we also put on a OSHA 10 class um, basically for, that was open to anybody in the industry. Oh yeah, yeah. Students and, and, and everything that. like that. So that was, like I say, before uh, Georgia Film Academy. Georgia Film Academy then stepped in after that when they opened up and then started incorporating OSHA in their uh, training program, their their school, which was great. Yeah, but, yeah I remember, so, Oh yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No. I was going to say, yeah, I had to, when I was in uh, GFA, I had to go, we had to go up to Atlanta and, and take the, I think it was an eight hour course or whatever. And, yeah. and it was very informative. It was a lot of good information. And, and um, it was interesting. The guy that taught us that he, he was missing a thumb from an accident. So, I'm, but it, did, it didn't, it didn't mean anything uh, different on, on the, you know, the training that we got. I mean, it was very, very good training and very important. Um, because um, I have a background in safety too. So from uh, my previous career and I've always taken safety very serious and, and it's, it, it's good to see that the, the industry does. Cause I know that I know people, there's always ways to, that's what worries me. It's not so much people. It's, it's people that have to, that need to get things done and just quicker and, you know, improve your, 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 better and, Right. And you well, can do it faster, but and you cut that corner, and what that one time you cut the corner in this, especially in this case, can well in a lot of cases could mean life or death for someone. I mean, you know. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. We're going to have, um, I think, it's going to be department heads, and then obviously a, a, a producers working through the COVID coordinator that are going to basically have to put their foot down and say no, you have to mask during this situation when you're in close contact. Right. And, the, and it's going to be, if you don't do it and you don't do it correctly, then you will be leaving the set now. And that, I think that's, that's going to be, because uh, uh, you're going to have people say, well, I'm, I'm wearing the mask, but they're wearing it, you know, behind their head or something. Or they're being and you're like, smart, no. But, you know, and, yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's going to be like, no, that isn't, if you don't want to do it, then you're not going to work here and goodbye. I mean, got, it's going to got to be the, the, the person that's, that's yeah. strict about it. Now um, I've been seeing some conversations um, in some of the social media I'm involved with that, that people, that some productions, and this is not professional ones, obviously, because I right. would not consider this professional, but possibly trying to put in a little, clause where you sign away any liability against the production in case you get sick with COVID. And that's, that's something, especially for actors, that's yeah. something you should never, I no. would imagine never sign something yeah. like that. You know, basically any, anytime uh, you're, they're asking you to wait to sign a waiver of any sort. Um, if you are in a union, whether you're SAG or you are IOTC, um, then you definitely should not. And then, uh, you know, and, and it will be interesting to see what happens in the future because there is even some legislation that says that um, employers can't be responsible. But then, you know, there's going to be th th eventually down the pike, there's going to be um, some things that 
go one way or the other, and I, and I don't have a, you know, whether the, but you cannot sign away. And just because someone put something in your start paperwork doesn't make it, um, that's the way it has to be. I mean, I take my start paperwork and cross things out and uh, say no. Uh, uh, I say, uh, they say, well, this is a standard. I go, well, it's not standard to me. And, you know, and I'll talk to the producer about it. Um, I'm lucky that I'm in a position that I can do that. And maybe, you know, someone that is a little bit greener and that. Or, or they're uh, so hungry to get on the production right, that. Right. That, that, that know, they're willing to. Anything and, and, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I, uh, I don't need that. You know, I, I can walk away. I've walked away from shows before that didn't meet. Um, I have a rate. And if you can't make my rate, then I don't work. I mean, it's a pretty simple um, project because on the day that I change my rate is the day that that'll be the new rate, you know, if I come down. So right. my rate is my rate. That's a very good point, you know, knowing your value too. And, and, and especially when one is starting out in the industry or, or trying to make a name for themselves and in, in, in all departments, but w- knowing your value and then you you always get the friend or the friend of a friend that says hey give me the friend discount or hey give me this and once you make one concession then that concession becomes another one and then it becomes another one and before you know you've cut your rate you've cut it again and you've cut it and before you know the bottom yeah exactly exactly and and um you know people sometimes don't value i know it happens in the sound department you know they don't they don't value they value the good sound, but they don't value what it takes to maintain equipment. And I mean, you're dealing with a boat with, with maintenance to it, oh, yeah. you know, and um, gasoline or, you know, is not yeah, cheap. I'm everything. sure, you know, a boat's like, uh, what, what did they say? Own, owning a boat is like pouring uh, <laughs> um, money into the <laughs> hole in the yeah, water. water. Or yeah. Yeah. Or something like that. But um, there's upkeep, there's maintenance, there's, there's your knowledge that you've built and you, you've got an impressive enough professional resume uh, of, of film work that you, you know what you're talking about. You've certified and uh, you have those things in place that speak ahead of you. You know, when you, when, when, when your name shows up, someone pulls out or sees your resume or considering you for, for a production, they already know what they're getting right there. And so, you know, there's not much haggle room, I imagine, you know, and, and that's a good no. thing, you know, that, that you can, you can kind of command that, you know, and because they know that they're going to get this certain level of professionalism out of you, that, that maybe someone else that shows up maybe with a boat and maybe they took an OSHA class you know, or right. something, well, well, they the think they know, is, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've done, you know, the budgets, I've, I do, you know, the safety, I do the, you know, and like you say, I have that background that I can really um, bring and, and I'm constantly uh, upgrading, you know, a couple of years ago, I went and got my uh, EMT and, it, uh, you know, it, I felt it was a skill set that I could, um, would help me further along. I got my US power boating instructor course so that, you know, I can literally, um, have a, a a course where I can teach an actor how to drive a boat and not just from my 20 some years of experience, but also from, oh, we actually have a certification of that. I have become an instructor to how to teach someone do, to do it. So, so you do that, you do that now as a rate, like, is that something that, that you normally regularly do? Uh, yeah, like in uh, between film. Yeah, in between films, uh, I'll I'll uh, do boat training uh, with people. I have people who call me and say, "Hey, my daughter, my wife, or I need you know we just bought a boat and we mm-hmm. want to know you know how how to do it safely in this area." And is you know, is this, this area re- is very unique? Is this related to Latitude Thirty Two Productions? Um, or? It, it's just another another little side gig. You know, we, we okay. It, here, the people here in the film industry have so many side gigs. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm, I mean, no, yeah. I mean, that, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a kind of a, the king of side gigs. Yeah, I, I've been That's very awesome. lucky. Uh, I've always done what I've wanted. Uh, uh, what I, I wanted to live my life without regret. That was back, you know, in my 
18, 19 years old, 20 years old. I said that and thought that, and I've had uh, adventures uh, around the world to, and being able to now take all that life skills and, and things and put it into the film industry. That's really been the, the gist of it. And that's what sometimes is funny when you have someone 18 or 19 years old and they say, I want to do what you do. You go, well, then go out and live your life for 30 years and come back and we can talk about doing what I do. But until you live that life for 30 years, you can't get to where I am. You can't just start here. You know, it, you've, no, there's we, a lot of, there's, there's a lot, a lot of, of combined skill set. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and a lot of intention out, attention out intentionality yeah. if that's a word <laughs> that, that that got you to where you were you know you set out a path and you know it may not have been the exact path you wanted it might have been the winding road here or there but you know you did what needed to be done to build that foundation to get you to the level you are in your career now and all that so um yeah there's a lot to be said for that you know ex experience um and so yeah um what else what else have we um what have we not talked about i'm trying to add, I think we, we've covered quite a bit we've covered uh, a lot um if there's uh, um if that's it then uh we may uh bring the video here to a close um sure and all but i want i want to thank my guest here uh michael neal um if you want to get hold of them the best way is to google them probably just yeah google mike neal marine coordinator savannah georgia it'll come right up It'll come right up and then it'll lead you to, to getting in contact with him and um, uh, doing, he does the Moon River kayak tours, the Bull River cruises. And uh, if you're not familiar with Savannah area, that's, that's, that's our, our waterway areas a uh, very, very, I'm sure very lucrative because we have such a beautiful, Savannah is such a beautiful place in the yeah. marshlands and the waterways are, are just magnificent around here yeah. and uh it's it's just a beautiful place and and uh it's somewhere you should you should come and experience if you haven't um well i want to thank you for joining me for all of this here on savannah on film michael neal uh i really appreciate it i know we had a little problem getting hooked up there it took a while and yeah. and uh you know we're still working out the kinks here getting all this <laughs> production down at least i am here but uh everything's uh everything's good but um thank you once again for for being thank on you, the show Ed. and um uh thank you everybody who's hopefully joined us in the chat yeah. here or who watched this on the replay on youtube uh we're savannah on film you can find us on facebook if you want to go to savannah on film uh, click that like button there and follow us and you'll see who our new guests are and coming up and uh I always like to talk to interesting people. So you can email us at Savannah on film at gmail.com. Um, and um, whatever else uh, we're on YouTube, Savannah on film, go hit that subscribe button over there. Click on the, the notifications button. So when we have new videos like, like this one, you'll be alerted to them and, and you'll get to uh, interact um, with um, very interesting people. Uh, like Michael Neal. Anyway, so thank you everybody for listening. And this has been Savannah on film. I'm, I'm just going to play the outro here. Let's see on, on this. Okay. So thanks for joining us. Thanks guys. Have a great day. You have been listening to another episode of Savannah on film, where we give a voice to the Savannah film community. Please like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter. This program was originally broadcast on 107.5 FM in Savannah, Georgia, and worldwide on www.wruu.org. Join us next time for more intriguing insights into the vibrant Savannah film community here at Savannah on Film. And also on YouTube, Savannah on Film. All right, goodbye. All right, bye now.